Ms. Kimbao Chen, James Rokol, distinguished delegates, excellencies, exhibitors, partners of World LPG Forum 2015, members of the organizing committee and World LP Gas Association, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very good morning to all of you. It is indeed a pleasure to be here and to share my thoughts with this distinguished gathering of industry leaders and professionals from the acclaimed platform of the 28th edition of the World LPG Forum. I would like to compliment the World LPG, LP Gas Association for the efforts put in to organize this eagerly awaited global event. I'm confident that this year too, the forum will make significant contributions to the growth of the LPG industry and that the takeaways from the discussions and deliberations here shall shape the way we do business in future. Indian Oil is proud to be a part of the World LP Gas Association as one of its oldest associates. We have always adv advocated sharing of experience, expertise, technological advances, and pioneering breakthroughs for the benefit and betterment of the industry as a whole. This year's theme, Expanding Horizons, is a reflection of the dynamic and progressive mindset of WLPGA aimed at ensuring that LPG as a clean and green fuel reaches and touches every sphere of life the world over. The spread of LPG use is equally relevant to the developed as well as the developing countries. We are well aware that WLPGA seeks to further propagate the use of LPG in developing countries as a clean, environment-friendly, healthy, and affordable fuel. And we are happy to be able to participate and contribute in ensuring its wider applications across sectors. Now, before I share with you India how India is propagating the use of LPG as an exceptional fuel, let me briefly sketch out the current status of the oil and gas industry in India. India is the fourth largest consumer of energy in the world today, and its need for energy supply continues to rise in line with the country's dynamic and economic growth and modernization. We consume 788 million tons of oil equivalent, including bioenergy. India's economy has grown at an average growth rate of approximately 7.4% per annum between 2005 and 15, touching a high of 10.3% in 10-11. With a big push in the country's reform process and monetary policies and a return to macroeconomic stability, it is expected to accelerate further to 7.5% in 2015 as per IMF projections. Of course, as per our expectations of the Prime Minister of India, we should be into a double-digit growth path very soon. Moving on to LPG marketing, India is the fourth largest consumer in LPG2. In fact, it's the third largest consumer of LPG in the domestic sector, with home delivery of 3.8 million LPG cylinders per day. That is 1.13 billion cylinders a year. There has been a steady growth in LPG demand over the years. For the past five years, the cumulative annual growth rate of LPG demand was 6.6%. At the moment, it's again a double-digit growth. India's demand for LPG in 14-15 was 17.6 million tons, with indigenous production by state and private players accounting for only 9.8 million tons. Imports accounted for almost 45% of the total LPG demand. Domestic LPG users in India consume a massive 91% of the LPG in India for cooking purposes. With an average domestic customer enrollment of 15 million per year in the past three years, the LPG customer population has touched 189 million as on date. The three major players in LPG marketing are state-owned enterprises, which together meet the entire demand of the household cooking gas market. Amongst them, Indian Oil leads with a share of nearly 50% in the domestic segment, currently accounting for 7.8 million tons per annum. As I had mentioned earlier, a unique feature of the Indian LPG market is home delivery of cylinders. Indian Oil alone delivers Indian, to, Indian is our brand name, to the doorsteps of over 92 million households across the country, covering about 3,300 markets under the supervision of 46 Indian area offices. Its 91 bottling plants together roll out 1.8 million cylinders a day. And we backed up and are backed up by 10 refineries as mentioned by James a dedicated network of over 8,300 distributors and pipelines connecting high consumption centers. Looking back into the past, the phenomenal success of LPG as a cooking gas was hard to imagine when it was launched in India 
way back in 1955 at Mumbai by a multinational company. It wasn't until Indian Oil Corporation took charge that it actually became a thriving business. The first LPG connection under brand name Indain was released on 27, 22nd October 1965 at Kolkata, almost exactly 50 years ago. In the initial stages immediately after launch, LPG as a cooking gas did not find ready acceptance. The concept was, was alien and customers were apprehensive of keeping a gas cylinder in their kitchen, somehow perceiving it as unsafe and a potential hazard. Between 1965 and 1970, Indian barely achieved 235,000 connections. Market studies and feedback indicated an innate res resistance. To counter this negative perception, Indian Oil launched a massive education and awareness campaign on the safe use of LPG as a cooking fuel. With a combination of above-the-line advertising, media interventions, and educational programs, the campaign helped change the attitude of customers. It was one of Indian Oil's first marketing successes and helped grow the user base to nearly 15 million between 1965 and 1997. The economic boom of the, of the 90s generated a truly massive demand for LPG. To meet this demand, Indian Oil released another 15.2 million additional Indian LPG connections between 1997 and 2001, pushing the total number past the 30 million. Simultaneously, the company doubled its bottling capacity from 1.45 million tons per annum to over 3 million tons per annum. In a way, even though LPG had a slow start, it picked up great momentum soon, bringing about a kitchen revolution in urban India spreading warmth and cheer to millions of households. It led to a substantial improvement in the health of women by replacing smoky and unhealthy chulas, which are earthen ovens that used firewood, coal, and biomass. Over the years, dearth of traditional fuels made people in cities and towns adopt LPG as a cooking fuel. It is today recognized as an ideal fuel for modern kitchens, synonymous with safety, reliability, and convenience. Of course, our challenge is to make this shift possible in rural India, which still accommodates 70% of our total population. Today, packed LPG in four cylinder sizes accounts for almost 98% of Indian sales. Of these, 5 kg in 14.2 kg cylinders for domestic use are subsidized and comprise 90.9%, while 19 kg and 47.5 kg cylinders for industrial and commercial consumption make up the balance. Of course, there are other players as well, with smaller versions of cylinders as well as larger version of uh, uh, industrial use cylinders. Put together, this makes it about 570 million packed cylinders handled by our supply, logistics, and distribution network every year. Our LPG is also supplied in bulk to large volume consumers in the manufacturing and engineering sectors. Indian Oil operates 350 auto LPG dispensing stations, covering over 190 cities across India. In some of the states, uh, it has been mandated that auto LPG should be the fuel for commercial vehicles, especially in cities like Bangalore and uh, uh, Chennai and Kolkata, where the three-wheelers, uh, which are quite popular amongst foreign as, uh, foreigners as uh, tourist attractions, but it's basically the, uh, the most uh, uh, probably uh, preferred uh, commercial vehicle operation. It is mandated that these vehicles operate on LPG. So we say LPG as an auto fuel. In India, three-wheelers are called as autos. So it is typically, uh, it has become an auto rickshaw fuel. Its price maintained, uh, the price of auto LPG gas uh, is maintained around 35 to 40% lower than gasoline. And low filling time uh, are reasons enough for consumers to convert their vehicles to auto gas. As I mentioned earlier, Indian Oil will complete 50 years of LPG marketing in India on October 22nd this year, with brand Indian growing more robust and popular by the day. Moving on to contemporary issues in LPG marketing, I would like to share with you a highly successful initiative that has been mentioned, of course, that we have implemented across the length and breadth of our country very recently. You may be aware that the Indian government has been subsidizing domestic use of LPG in an effort to encourage more and more households to use it as a cooking gas. In other words, LPG is sold below the cost to make it affordable. However, with the proliferation of LPG usage to over 189 million households, the underrealization suffered by the oil marketing companies on account of subsidies 
reached humongous proportions. For the year 2013 and 14, it was US 4 billion. Further, subsidy on domestic LPG makes it amongst the cheapest of fuels in the country and led to its leakage into non-domestic uses, further adding to the subsidy burden on the state exchequer. When I say non-domestic uses, I mean people used to use it for vehicles, uh, the domestic cylinders used to get into vehicles, the domestic use, uh, cylinders used to get into restaurants, it you also get, uh, used to get into certain industrial applications as well. So keeping this in view, we had implemented a novel scheme during 1415 to enable transfer of the LPG subsidy component directly into the bank accounts of individual consumers. The scheme, direct benefit transfer of LPG, DBTL in short, better known as PAHAL in our country, initiated by the government of India in November last year, has made it to the Guinness Book as mentioned, of world record as the world's largest cash transfer program for households. I think my colleague is uh, getting into greater detail later this afternoon on, on this particular scheme. Uh, exemplary coordination and execution of the scheme by the three oil marketing companies ensured that 89% of the LPG consumers joined the scheme in a short period of less than four months. By mid-September 2015, subsidy amounts to the tune of four billion USD has been transferred directly to bank accounts of over 142 million consumers. I mean, it's, it's, you can say that the scheme effectively started from 1st of April this year, and between April and September, almost 4 billion USD has been transferred into bank accounts of LPG consumers. With domestic sector consumers receiving the subsidy on cooking gas directly into their individual bank accounts, Better management of subsidy by the three oil marketing companies, as well as the government of India, led to savings of uh, 150,000 million Indian rupees per year on a recurring basis. Besides rationalizing and streamlining the subsidy mechanism, DBTL has ushered in many other benefits that will keep the system clean, lean, and efficient. It has eliminated up to 4.4 million ghost connections. Uh, I mean, when you say ghost connections, they were customers who did not exist which means the restaurants were taking the name of some consumer earlier and they were consuming it for, uh, I mean, commercial purposes. And with them, most of the supply chain and delivery distortions, as well as unauthorized diversion of subsidized LPG to non-subsidized, non-domestic use. This way, while ensuring significant savings in the government subsidy outgo, DBTL is also indirectly giving a boost to non-domestic bulk and auto LPG segments, which India is promoting in a big way. In fact, if you see after the implementation of this DBTL scheme, the growth in commercial and auto LPG segments have been phenomenal. I mean, they have been uh, over 30% uh, in the last few months. Moreover, the DBTL model offers scope for LPG sales through new marketing channels. For instance, with the growth of services sector, there is an influx of young non-resident working population in cities and towns across India. This segment had to rely on small cylinders sold by unstructured and localized players who sell refuels at commercial rates. Indian Oil tapped this opportunity and made available 5 kg free trade LPG cylinders in 115 cities, enrolled about 16,000 new customers, and sold nearly 30,000 refuels during the year 1415 alone. LPG marketers are now free to pursue such new and innovative marketing model that offer more and more value-added facilities and choices to LPG users, such as transactions and alerts by online IBRS and SMS modes company and distributor portability, preferred time delivery, mode of payment, and so on. However, with the growth of piped natural gas networks in the coming years, the pricing of domestic packed LPG vis-a-vis -vis piped gas could pose a challenge as domestic consumers, especially in the urban areas, would have a choice of both. However, I think both these uh, forms of fuel would need to continue in a very, very uh, growing economy and where still uh, it is nowhere near saturation level. After restricting LPG subsidy to genuine beneficiaries, the next step was to reduce its quantum. Under the guidance of the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas Government of India, the oil marketing companies once again launched an All India multimedia campaign titled Give It Up. In fact, our uh, Honorable Prime Minister launched the scheme uh, on 27th of March and it became effective from 1st of April this year. So Give It Up basically encourages the better off LPG consumers to voluntarily forego their subsidy on LPG cooking gas, which shall then be used to provide kitchen fuel to families that cannot afford it at present. Meaning thereby, there is a linkage between 
the subsidy given up by uh, an affluent uh, LPG consumer and a customer receiving subsidized LPG uh, because of the giving, giving it up by the affluent customer. There's a, a linkage which we are trying to establish. A BPL customer gets what has been offered by the affluent customer. Surprisingly, uh, it is not really the affluent customers who are actually giving up. The customers who are actually giving up are the middle class uh, type of consumers who are actually moved by uh, uh, this uh, process that their contribution can be used directly uh, by a beneficiary who belongs to the weaker sections. In response to this co campaign launched in April 2015, as of today, more than 3.2 million people have already given up their subsidy and almost 35 to 40,000 households are signing up for this national cost on a daily basis. This has led to savings of 720 million Indian rupees so far, which instead of going into the government coffers, is being utilized to provide subsidized LPG to families below the poverty line. I'm confident that such type of access subsidization for below poverty line families will usher in the next big revolution in LPG marketing in India in the coming years. Let me further elaborate on this. The theme of the current edition of WLPGA is expanding horizons. As a reflection of this theme, India is focusing on ensuring that LPG reaches every household in the country. The traditional business model for LPG relied on households in urban and semi-urban areas. Even today, its penetration in India's rural hinterland is still far from satisfactory. With about 72% of India's population living in villages and about 68% villages having a population of less than 2,000, this is both a challenge and an opportunity. The fact that traditional and environmental un environment unfriendly fuels account for almost 23% of the 688 million tons oil equivalent energy consumption of India even today offers immense scope for expansion of LPG marketing, especially in rural markets. In India, the consumption of subsidized LPG is a strong function of income, especially in rural areas. With biomass available as a cheaper alternative, LPG use in villages is restricted mainly to middle and high income households in the rural areas. Use of LPG in low income households poses two hurdles, its accessibility and its affordability. The lack of economies of scale in catering to rural domestic con consumers was one of the main factors hindering ready access to LPG. For regular LPG distributors, opting for rural markets, low population density, poor road infrastructure, low LPG uptake, as well as consumption amongst those who sign up for LPG make it difficult to establish a commercially viable venture. When it comes to affordability, the combination of high startup costs and a large cash outlay for each refill again poses a barrier to the uptake and regular use of LPG by low-income households. Also, price fluctuations for something as essential as a cooking fuel would mean disproportionate hardship to rural farming households, which may not have a reliable and steady source of cash income. To address these issues, we have pioneered the concept of low-cost, small-format, self-sustaining LPG distributorships, which do not need large outlays in rural India. This concept has taken strong roots and today, apart from the 11,800 regular LPG distributorships in cities and towns, the three marketing companies together operate nearly 4,900 rural distributorships. Rural LPG distributorships is a shining success story in India with nearly 12 lakh rural households or uh, 1.2 million rural households converted to LPG in the last three years. Since the pattern of usage is yet to be established and considering the economic situation of the rural consumers, 5 kg domestic cylinders are being introduced in rural markets instead of 14.2 kg LPG cylinders. Hitherto, these compact cylinders were sold only in hilly terrain for logistic reasons. As part of the intensive efforts being made to rapidly expand this network, the government is diverting subsidy amounts given up by well-to-do this way to provide access subsidy, while at the same time continuing to extend product subsidy to this price-sensitive segment. The three oil marketing companies are also pitching in with part of their CSR funds to bring more and more households into this fold. In order to make the model fully affordable for below poverty line consumers, smaller capacity cylinders such as 5 kg and probably below are being rolled out for such schemes. With this concerted drive, I am confident that India will achieve its goal of reaching LPG to every household very soon. Of course, there are logistics challenges and we are really trying to work out a model 
which will succeed in uh, getting these low-income rural households into the LPG usage, if not for anything else, for their better health. Especially with increasing awareness of LPG as the ideal fuel, even rural areas and improvement in literacy levels, particularly among women. Here, I would like to clarify that subsidy per se is bad in any form. However, in the context of rural India, it is to be seen as a baby food being fed to an infant till it's strong enough to eat on its own. This way and many other ways, the agenda of the public sector oil marketing companies in India goes beyond numbers to pro provide affordable energy solutions for even the most inhospitable and inaccessible terrains in the country. I am proud to share with this August gathering that Indian Oil operates the world's highest al altitude LPG bottling plant at Leh in Himalayas, about 3,500 meters above mean sea level, which serves the people of the inhospitable terrain of Ladakh. In fact, we need to uh, push an LPG uh, during a period of six months when it is not snow clad so that it can take care for the rest of the year. In fact, the LPG consumption is more during the winter season and it's a real logistics challenge to position the uh, product in bulk and then continue the refilling operations during the snow clad months. It r the plants there in Leh still uh, rolls out about 2,000 cylinders every day. Over the years, the demand for LPG has crossed over from domestic sector to commercial and ind industrial LPG segments. As a multi-purpose energy source, LPG has also proved its utility as an automobile fuel in refrigeration, welding works, and even in the fuel for the Olympic torch. This versatility of LPG is perhaps its biggest asset, one that all of us should capitalize upon. In this context, you'll be happy to know that Indian Oil's R&D team had recently developed a breakthrough nanotechnology to introduce Indian NanoCut, a high term cutting gas for industrial applications in metal cutting segment. The product combines the safety of LPG with high temperatures of oxyacetylene, making it a viable alternative and probably an environmental friendly alternative. Initially launched in select markets, this product is garnering excellent reviews and we are planning to roll it out on a pan India basis through our resellers and channel partners. In fact, my colleague from the R&D yesterday in the technical session had made a presentation and uh, which is uh, received with interest uh, by all the participants. Besides having our own R&D center for the product development, we also have a state-of-the-art LPG equipment research center on an industry basis. We conduct extensive research on equipment related to LPG use, such as cylinders, pressure regulators, hoses, seals, gas filling equipment, and so on, and come out with innovative concepts and designs in this center. But as we were discussing yesterday, we found that uh, the hose pipe uh, which has been uh, developed at, by this center is actually rodent proof. Uh, so it could find a lot of similar applications in uh, certain developing areas where uh, some of these could be uh, similar problems. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity for developments in one part of the world to be utilized effectively in other parts of the world. This gives a special opportunity for international manufacturers and partners to participate with us and share their ideas and capabilities. Coming back to this forum, there is no doubt that all of us in the LPG business need to work towards a more pervasive presence of this product across segments with economy. And I would like to once again submit that the Indian model of providing both accessibility and affordability to LPG use is a good model for developing countries. The DP DBTL route is a tried and tested route for targeting subsidies to cover genuine beneficiaries who are in need of support. I would like to reiterate that India offers an excellent scope for LPG business in the coming years, both for the domestic companies and overseas firms. As per current projections, the demand for LPG is set to rise from the current around 18 million tons to 30 million tons per annum in the next seven years at a cumulative growth rate of nearly 7%. Despite the projected increase in domestic production from 11.3 to 14.3 million tons in the next five years, imports are sec set to cross the 50% mark. Accordingly, Key players in the business are implementing projects to raise the country's LPG import capacity of 9.75 million tons currently by an additional 4.4 million tons by the year 2018-19. A lot of import LPG uh, import facilities are being set up. Uh, the capacity to handle ships are getting expanded. Uh, there, are, there are more berths uh, getting constructed in some of the ports uh, to reduce uh, the time uh, and so on. Moreover, with clean system in place and with a hygienic growth being planned for the future, the next phase of growth will be both sustainable and rewarding. All of us are bound by a special commitment to propagate the use of LPG as an exceptional fuel and ensure that its benefits are safe, reliable, and convenient fuel, 
reach more and more people and places across the world. It's all the more needed as LPG has to also compete with fuels such as LNG. We shall ensure its availability and price competitiveness in future. While safe use of LPG is propagated and practiced, it's the responsibility of our industry to further dwell on the subject to make bulk LPG transportation much more safer, accident-free, and reliable. In fact, this is one of the ills plaguing our industry in India, because there are the number of accidents on the road have increased substantially, uh, thanks to the congestion in almost all the roads, uh, and uh, of course, uh, some of the reckless driving practices being practiced. All of us have the knack of developing technologies and marketing them. However, their successes depends on the skills and backup needed to scale them up quickly, as demanded by our customers. We all need to be focused on nurturing and developing such capabilities in time to win the confidence of our customers. In conclusion, I'm quite confident that the discussions and deliberations in this Friday event will throw up new and innovative approaches to make LPG gas the fuel of tomorrow across the world. I once again thank the forum for providing me an opportunity to be here this morning and, uh, of course, gaining much more out of uh, this experience than whatever little that I could share with you. Thank you once again and have a great event. Thank you.